He's a tough guy. I'm going to call to order this uh, regular meeting of the Plain Township Board of Trustees for January 28th. If everybody will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. He's bad. All right, before us we have the agenda as presented. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections by fellow board members or department heads? Yes, Mr. Hawes, I have one uh, addition I'd like to add under law director number one, uh, annexation matter. Okay. I believe under fiscal we had a number 10. Correct, number 10, and then resolution is number 14 38 and 14 39. Any other additions, deletions, or corrections? Okay, the agenda will stand as amended and Sheriff's report. There's nothing. Do we have anybody in the audience that has anything they wish to address the uh, sheriff's office with? If, if you would, for the record, just stand, state your name and your address for the fiscal officer, for the record. And then. My name is Troy Manley. My address is 2555 Teakwood Street. And uh, just last night I had uh, called the sheriff's because I was following this guy. I went around and was walking. Apparently, a lot of us, whoever lives right here close, I don't know if they're just in my neighborhood, but over here in Holly Hills area right here, a black man was walking up, not because he's black, but he was a black man, walking up the road. Didn't stop at any house until he got to the corner of Teakwood and Middle Branch. He went to their house and was talking to the guy, then left. And things have already happened because last Wednesday night, my car had gotten into, my neighbor's truck gotten into, and my other neighbor's car, right within three houses of each other. And that was just after someone was going around the neighborhood saying they're with AT&T trying to sell U-verse. I work for AT&T, and I've already had the U-verse since it started, and they're not supposed to be going to people's houses that already have it. So to make it short, there's been vendors going around collecting for homeless, and somebody going around saying they're collecting money for a six-year-old or a young kid with cancer. So I followed this man. He walked down Middle Branch, and I was cold as it is. I don't know who would send anybody out in this, but he walks down Middle Branch, goes into Sherwood Village, walks down Chaucer, doesn't stop at a house on Middle Branch or Chaucer, turns on to Wycliffe, goes to one house down there, which I went to his house later that night after I talked to the sheriff. And then he walks back up, goes, works his way all the way back up to Middle Branch, never stops at another, but I was on the phone with dispatch by then and the sheriff pulled up and so I left. But he called me and said the guy is legit and has a permit and um, I just think, even if they work for at and because I got a call, I had to call all the way up to Connecticut to get a lady to give me an answer on who's in charge of hiring vendors for this area, because I have it and they shouldn't have been at my house. She called me back the next day and said they did have some at and vendors out there, but just because they work for anybody, at and doesn't mean they can't be checking out the neighborhood and then going back and telling friends or, or themselves involved with going back and... Later that night, like I say, vehicles were gotten into, and hopefully it doesn't lead to houses. But I was, my concern was, can the township do anything about doing away with soliciting? I've lived here for 30 years, and we never had this many, and we never had trouble. And I was just wondering, my wife was trying to check online, and she said it costs $75 for a vendor's license. I'm like, well, if somebody's going to pay that to, to go get a permit, they could donate that to a sick kid or the homeless. So, Danny, can anyhow, you, can you speak just to the permit process and how that's handled? Ab absolutely. Number one, there should be no one soliciting for any business whatsoever within a residential neighborhood, period. Uh, you know, business solicitors are not permitted, whether it's AT&T, whether it's me going around selling raffle tickets, you know, if it's a, if it's a business sale, the answer is no, there should be no one there, and my suggestion is exactly what you did, is to contact the sheriff immediately. Because if they try to show you some kind of a permit for a business solicitation in a residential neighborhood, it's, a, it's fraudulent, to be very straightforward and blunt about it. Okay. 
Um, we do have two charitable organizations uh, that do have vendor, who uh, do have permits to solicit within residential neighborhoods. However, once again, the most important thing is if you ever have a question about it, anyone should show you a letterhead with, you know, from the township with the names of anyone who is permitted to be there. And again, I urge anyone to please contact the sheriff if there's anyone in your neighborhood that you are concerned about. Whether they show you anything or not, they can always stop and, and check it. The sheriff knows who is permitted to be there and who is not. Um, I had a call this afternoon about someone once again soliciting for electric sales. And I told the lady the same thing. Please contact the sheriff immediately. Because the issue there was someone came up to her when she was pulling into her garage and appeared at her garage door. So you have to, you have to call right away. So that, that is absolutely not permitted. Okay. So if the officer says that this guy was legit, had a permit and everything, and if he's from the homeless, is, is the homeless okay? Have we, the, I do not have, have any. Because I would like to know where I can get a list of whose name's on it, who is the one, who's the vendor. And who's, you know. If you'll leave me, well, I can get the information from uh, from our fiscal officer here. Or at the end of the meeting, if you'll stop by and give me your phone number, so okay. I can get that information for okay. you. Absolutely. And we're, we're working with our law director right now as far as revisiting that entire process and you know, the codes on that. But yeah, we've looked at a couple of ways to make it stronger, right. including some background check stuff. and. And things like that. Some other communities have already done, so we're, we're hopeful to have something like that in place when it picks up in the spring and they're all still oh, at we'll the have, door. Yeah. We'll have you wouldn't soon. think you'd see too much activity now, but. No, that's what I mean. And, and I work out in it every day. I get paid good money and I don't like being out there. Right. But people going around walking that far, about a half mile, stopping at two houses, you know, it just. Yeah. And then things around the neighborhood happening, vehicles getting yeah. into afterwards. I think, so. Denny, is that list something that any resident could come in and ask? And see who well, sure, sure. Okay. So the shortest for Plain Township for our process, as it is, you would just call into the zoning the zoning office, and they can tell tell you over the phone, email, or if you stop in, who's up, who's on that list. Sure. Yeah. If you want to do that, your email address, whatever, yeah. we'll get that to you tomorrow. Because essentially, with our process, it's like the uh, you've got that stamp seat seal. And the key, the key again is that because every individual that is soliciting, you got an entity that comes in and gets a permit, and he has people out there actually soliciting. Does each one of those individuals have a permit with them? For the yes. Process each each person for has, uh, well, for example, a letter would go to ABC, ABC, and on that letterhead, if five people are listening, then all those people are on that list. And their names will be there. Their names are there. Um, we send that list to the sheriff's office. And if there's ever any question, you can once again contact us on that. And we have had a rash of, we have had several calls recently about solicitors for energy. Um, we had a gentleman in here the week before last who was uh, soliciting in a neighborhood and, and the sheriff talked to him and he came in and we advised him that he was not committed to be here. I don't know if he left the area or not, but uh, you know, we advised him at that point that he was not committed to be so here. So if the sheriff doesn't see a name on the list, they're more likely going to tell this person you need to leave the or township and at least. Right. Even, if, even if he was on, um, if he said he was working for ABC but he's not on ABC's list, then he shouldn't be there. Anyone who is who is there or should be on that list. Yeah, but the, I brought this up several months ago, and, and you know, I think what we want to move towards is having the background checks on those individuals right. yeah. that are going to be in a neighborhood. So that was another know, question. I was wondering if they did background checks on them. That's so. what we want to move towards, so we know exactly what the backgrounds of the people are in the neighborhoods. Right, Mr. Williams and I are working on that right now. <laughs> That's all handled the right way. Yeah, if we implement a background check, how to put the onus on those that are soliciting as opposed to the township. Yeah. That's another big piece of the puzzle, so. Thank you for your Thank concern. You. Thank you.
And I, I encourage you to do it. Yeah. And let your neighbors well, know. I, just, I like my neighborhood. I grew up here for 30 years, just like yeah. Louie. And I don't know. I just know names from seeing it in the paper. And I think everybody's done a good job, even the chief well, here. I, I would encourage you to do exactly what you did. And tell your neighbors. I've been telling them I just stopped at the neighbor's house on the way over here. I said, no, no. you need to have lights on out there. I had two of them I called last night right across from me. I said, neither one of you guys got your lights on. Now you, I, they turned them on. I said, now I can see if someone's walking around your house and you didn't know it. So it just helps to tell people, turn on lights. Because they don't want to be seen. If they don't want to go somewhere where there's light. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Does anybody else have anything for the sheriff's office? Okay, that'll close the sheriff's report. Nothing on the detective's report. Nothing on our unfinished business or new business, so that'll take us right to the fiscal officer's report. I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Flax. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first one's a request for a resolution by the Plain Town Board of Trustees. Uh, Stark County, Ohio, to authorize the payment of the pending warrants in the amount of $116,691.22. So move, second, discussion, roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giadesis? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Uh, fiscal officer number two is a request for a resolution by the Plain Town Board of Trustees to authorize the payment of regular payroll in the amount not to exceed $220,000. So move. Se second, discussion, roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giavasis? Yes. Mr. Lingo? Yes. Fiscal Officer number three is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to authorize the payment for the following medical claims as provided by all Care and Express scripts. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giavasis? Yes. Mr. Lingo? Yes. Officer number four is the investment report. Good. Uh, fiscal officer number five uh, is going to be a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to approve uh, the following permanent appropriations for 2014. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Giudasis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And Mr. Lino? Yes. Fiscal Officer number six is going to be a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to authorize the release of insurance proceeds uh, for a fire. Uh, it was a loss on April 4th, 2013 at 3805 Everhart Road in the amount of $21,800. Also move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Hopp? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. And Mr. Giudasis? Yes. Fiscal officer number, uh, number seven. Is going to be a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to authorize a refund as follows for overpayments uh, as provided by Emergency Medical Services by Ohio Billing. So moved. A second it. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. And Mr. Giudasis? Yes. And fiscal Officer number eight is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees uh, to authorize the release of. Um, some escrow funds that are being held for the fire station. So moved. Second, Second Mr. Lino. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Giudasis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And Mr. Lino? Yes. <clears throat> Squad officer number nine uh, is going to be a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to, to authorize the release of insurance proceeds. Uh, from a, a, a loss caused by a fire on October 11, 2009 at 3950 Mount Pleasant Street, Northwest. I'll so move authority to pay. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Leon? Yes. And Mr. Giudasis? Yes. Uh, fiscal officer number 10 is the one that was added. It's just a request to amend resolutions 14 38 and 1439 to put the appropriate salaries account that we discussed on it. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giudasis? Yes. And that will conclude my report. Turn it over to our administrator, Mr. Agassino.
Yes, Mr. Chairman, item number one is our annual meeting with the Star County Engineers for the road superintendents and the trustees and fiscal officers. Friday, March 28th, for the road superintendents, and Saturday, March 29th, for the trustees and fiscal officers. Okay. <coughs> item number two is a letter from the Tax Incentive Review Council for the appointments from our board, um, just making sure that the, the list is staying the same, or if the board would like to change that, we can get in touch with Mary Lee down at the previous plan. Yes, yeah, so it's got, I think I've done the primary, you have the secondary, and then the primary. Denny's the third, yeah, the secondary. Yes, or you and I, and then Denny's the all in that one, the last one. We should be the same. Okay. And that's all for the administration. Thank you. Take it to the fire department, Chief Snyder. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is the uh, resolution to authorize renewal of uh, the attached contract with Tony Campbell uh, for legal collection services. So move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Thank you. Item number two <clears throat> is to authorize a purchase payment for Gas and oil and diesel fuel and cost not to exceed $18,750. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And Mr. Lino? Yes. If I may, Mr. Chairman, just to one other note that uh, uh, over the past few weeks when we've had the snow, that uh, we a fine job and great job the road crew has done. I know from our personnel getting back to me that. Roads are clear for them to be able to have access into the residents to serve them and get there in a quick and responsible time. And, and that was all due to the fact, too, with some of that with, with the roads being cleared. So just want to thank Joe for that and, and the board for that, that happening. <coughs> that will conclude fire. And then we'll give it to our public service department director, Mr. Icino. <coughs> <laughs> Item number one is a resolution to authorize Derek Enninger and Sean Carter to attend the 2014 recertification conference in, in Akron. Um, it's for their fertilizer and pesticide license. Um, we have to get that every year. So it's a mandatory thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. As I say, because that gives them also the right to be able to do like the mosquito, mosquito, mosquito bay, roadside spraying yeah. and stuff. Yeah. 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 So we can carry that license. February 19th. Also move on public service number one. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. J. Basis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Item number two is a resolution to adopt the attached athletic field policies for usage of the parks and facility and parks programming. Also move. Second. From a discussion. Aspect. I know this has been a uh, collaborative effort, I believe, between Derek, Joe, Joe, De Joe Derek, Rob, and yes. Rob, Rob, ultimately to get things <coughs> uniform from the amount of details that are in it. Good, good work, and there's been some discussion. Is there anything specific just from general comments? I just wanted to point out that when there is a field status for, you know, if we have a lot of rain or something, they'll be able to look at that at the Plain Township website. Um, so not just have to drive all the way up or get a phone call. And um, one thing we did add, there is going to be a, you know, uh, if they damage the field and they're unauthorized to be there, um, there's going to be a fine in our own future. And that's actually consistent with our reservation policies that we passed at the mass meeting, and that's part of the conversation we've had, is how do we recoup for damages and things that have been exorbitant in the last couple of years. So it gets very costly at times, so especially on them baseball fields. Didn't send any further discussion. Nice work, nice work, guys. Mm -hmm. Nice. All the detail. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Leo? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Hop? Yes. And item number three uh, is an athletic field maintenance manual that Derek put together. Um, it's very well put together. It teaches everybody how to fix damages to the fields. Um, this will be available to all the uh, 
entities that are, are uh, using the fields, you know, soccer, lacrosse, softball, baseball, small things that they can fix, you know, if, if we have a rainstorm in the middle of their tournament or whatever. So this is also will be available online. We won't be passing these all, you know, press all these. This is something with an email. It was, yeah, it was something that uh, it would be easier for you to read it through, you know, hard copy than trying to scan through it on you. It's nice to have this photo. Uh, there's, yeah. there's no, there's no yeah. excuses. Right. We, we would couple that with the field uses policies and the, the uh, reservation uh, schedule with the contract so that everybody's got all the information in their hands ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here. No. There it is. Oh, here it is. As far as, is this anything that we need to... Uh, no, this is not just a flat. It's just okay. what's going to go out with a lot of jobs, uh, tournament signers. It's just to protect the township so that they know how to treat the fields ahead of time, and, and if damage occurs or extra precipitation occurs, they know how they can act on the field and continue the tournament without absorbing those damage costs that we talked about. It's just safe, safe methods for, for maintenance during a tournament and stuff. <coughs> okay, item number four is a letter we received from the Stark County Engineers. Um, 2013, when we did our uh, <coughs> property purchasing for salt, um, there was another program going on at ODOT. Uh, the bids came in lower for the ODOT uh, <coughs> bid than it did for the Stark County Engineers, who we've been with for over a dozen years. Um, of course, you know, people were wondering why we were paying more and, than that why we didn't get into that cooperative purchasing. Well, the engineers, as of right now, are going to suspend their cooperative salt purchasing for next year, which means our only chance is to go with ODOT. Um, I'm not so sure that's the most smartest thing we can do right now. There's a lot of entities aren't getting their salt on that other program. Um, we have to understand that if ODOT needs salt, they're getting their salt first before we'll have our that program. So, will it come back at that price next year? We have no idea. So we'll have to write ahead and step job. We get the we get the leftovers. So I had talked to Dave Torrance about this, and uh, I think if we, as a board, you, know, you guys as a board, think that they should continue their cooperative purchasing, if they got nudged enough, they would do it again. If they're just trying, you know, to cover, up, I think cover themselves with these lower prices. I think that's something, I mean, that would be a good point of discussion at the March meeting. I think March, that's a great March point. meeting to be. Because they've had complaints from other uh, boards, you know, that bought that, you know, why they, their price came back. Our price actually came back cheaper this year than last year, but it was 60 cents or something like that. So, but we have salt now. <laughs> You can tell the difference between our roads There's a lot of places versus don't the other have places. Salt. Are you saying this other organization that we could choose, that these are the organization that's causing these people not to have salt right now? The it's not the organization, it's the way the bid's <coughs> written. And there's a big long bidding process to, to join up with those guys. Um, where they're getting their salt from compared to where we're getting our salt from. Get delivery of that salt. And ODOT is always first on, on everyone's list that gets their salt. If they need salt, they're going to get their salt first. Whether it's from where we're getting it or where so it's from So it could cause a delay with us then? Yes. This year has proven that there is a big delay for a couple of the nearby cities. Have because are very low on salt, and you can tell what happened over this weekend. And then hopefully the county will see the proof as we're putting here that <laughs> we can't be without salt. If we have another winter like we did this year, we're in trouble. It sounds, right now, they're going to go with ODOT also, the county. So <laughs> this could that could be a disaster. Yeah. There's, There's people well, without salt right now. I, I'm mm -hmm. not in total agreement with this happening yet. I have to continue. I think to watch. Yeah. You know, if they get their salt in March, what good is it? You know, if we were able to hold four or five thousand tons that we can get in the summer yeah. all at once and not have to worry about it again. We can't do that. We don't have a, a facility big enough to hold that much salt. So we have to buy it throughout the winter, you know, as we use it. I don't think it's too risky in this dealing with people's lives. I think we barely really look good to it. Is there, a, is there any other options? Say, say if we even make the plea, and it's collectively with other townships, villages, municipalities, and they opt to still go 
through ODOT. Is there anything that we can do direct with like Cargill or? We can bid out our own. Okay. But the problem is the order volume is volume pricing. They are going off a good purchase, but the county was so big, you know, that's why we got the pricing we did. If we go on our own, we'd probably be paying 20 more bucks. Well, didn't we try that one probably before that's the kind that we ended up paying? Yeah. We had a problem that one year, Al. We ended up getting it from Peru, remember? It was three times the cost at yeah. the time. That's not simple. We need to mention that. I that. I mean, that's we, we need to keep looking at this. <coughs> and our bed is what do we have now? Half salt. We're yeah, okay. sitting about 1,100 ton right now. We're in good shape. We get another weekend like this. <laughs> Item number five is a, is a uh, resolution to authorize the purchase of gasoline, fuel, oil, and diesel fuel. Uh, I see $20,000. Also moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Gervasis? Yes. Mr. Hahn? Yes. Expand in my report. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. I think just to echo some similar sentiments that the Chief hit on earlier, you guys, you guys were taking a beating this weekend, did a great job holding, holding up. They really pulled through this. I mean, they do all the time, but it, it was a rough one. This was one of the roughest ones I remember. I think for the public sake. Very really, proud of them, to be honest with you. I them know you are, too. So. For the public sake, just know that, you know, when these guys are out running 24, 30 hours, at certain points we, we do have to pull them to send, send them home. It's, for so the safety and the well-being of the community. So sometimes if the road looks like it's a little more we'll be back uh, soon. treacherous, we'll, we'll be back out soon. But, for, but furthermore, if it's truly an emergency, we'll come. There, there's, there's plans in place with the emergency staff and roads. So uh, good good work. I can yeah, tell the you. biggest part of our time, we don't have enough people or can afford enough people to do those shifts because we're so big and spread out. So everybody has to work the whole time where we're going. That's, you know, if, if you were able to put another person in that truck for 12 hours at a time, you, you can't do that. It's not, we, we need another 12 people to do it. So. Well, I mean, now the time I guess to... Uh... Lou wouldn't come out. I kept trying to get him to come out. <laughs> I offered <laughs> 20. <laughs> I offered 20. He didn't answer his phone when I did talk. <laughs> but, but anyways, uh, I mean, this morning driving, to Alliance, my, my, my employer may mention that uh, coming out of her own allotment where she lives in a different municipality or a different subdivision and coming into Plain and then driving towards Alliance and leaving Plain, she said that uh, she made a mention and comment of the difference in the street. She said, only if I had built my house is three blocks to the north. I would been able to get out of my driveway this weekend, but the, the guys did a phenomenal job. It was evident today, um, yeah. because if you drove through any of the neighborhoods, you know, on the outskirts of the township, when you came into Plain, it was night and day, and when you left Plain, it was night and day. So you guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. That concludes public service. That's again, six zoning department. Mr. Falk, turn that over to you. Gentlemen, uh, before you have a resolution to advertise for bids, this is for the Moving Ohio Forward program. We're advertising for contractors for the demolition of, uh, right now, 17 residential structures. I have one on the computer. We don't. I don't have one online. I got nothing for zoning. Yeah, neither did. Neither did. Where are you? Yeah, basically is uh, a resolution for you guys to direct. Oh wait, it's for the yeah. 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 You might be out of order on your computer. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just click zoning, it'll come right up. Yeah, click to the zoning department. Oh, now there. No. Go ahead. I got it. Got it. Thank you. Also move on zoning one, moving Ohio forward, advertise for bids. A second. Discussion, then just as any specific points of clarification here. Uh, once again, it's a continuation of, of, of the program. The item is for currently 17 residential structures that we plan to demolish with the uh, cooperation of the Stark County Land Reutilization Corporation and our uh, combined funds. So hopefully, this will help clean up some neighborhoods and 
as we see how this program uh, works out, and if they continue, we may investigate doing it one more time or several more times as it goes. And then with some, with some different through some different funding sources. Yes. And how many homes is this going to? Currently, 17. 17 homes. Yes. Unless unless someone gets all of us pretty doggone quick. Yeah. It's going to be 17. But they've had proper notifications. And, yes. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Juvesis? Yes. Mr. Hobbs? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, just as important clarification. Mm -hmm. Troy, Troy, and yourself, Troy and yourself able to take a look over there and arborate him. Hey, he's, on that. he's checking what he may be able to do from his end. All right. Right. Thank you. That'll conclude zoning. Thanks, Mr. Falk. That's Thank you. Take us to parks programming. I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Steinberg. Gentlemen, the first item. Sorry, I'm like this. <laughs> the first item of business is um, a resolution to hire one Zachary Marzilli as a uh, part time soccer supervisor at the right in front of you from the current fund. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And Mr. Givasis? Yes. And um, he passed the daily uh, training and stuff? Yes. Okay. Yes. Item number two, gentlemen, is a pair of surveys. One was asked for by a resident that stopped in and visited us um, for different types of, of senior programming we're looking to offer. And while we have lots of ideas, uh, I felt it uh, pertinent to survey and put the survey out in several different places so that we can see what our senior citizens want to do and kind of a range of, of types of activities that, that we can provide for them. And the second one was tasked uh, with our department by Mr. Hawes in an effort to re-engage the total citizenship for what else we can be doing for them on a local level. So, and what sources are you using now? I'm sorry? What sources are you using? In regards to? For putting out the survey. Uh, we'll be putting it online. We'll be putting it at Township Hall in, in hard copy, in Diamond Complex on hard copy. Uh, we'll be sending a news release out and also placing it in our newsletter as well. The surveys themselves won't be placed in the newsletter, but where they can find them online just to save space will be um, evident. And all of our partners will be willing to, to carry that out for us as well. That actually, Rob is working on getting that update. Rob, just you know, the clarification is mm -hmm. obviously a social media website. It's not PondWiser. Pond we, we, we are in the process and have continued to update PondWiser. Um, the return on from what we send to when it gets posted is a little delayed at the moment. We're also working on um, access from an admin side to the parks page so we can continue to update field statuses, uh, standings for our winter leagues, uh, and just be more dynamic and more <coughs> immediate for our, our participants and users of the parks. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood the question. Any further discussion from Mr. Steinberg on that? <laughs> Put it on the <laughs> tab. <laughs> That'll uh, include parks programming. That's going to take us to the law director. Thank Mr. you. Williams. You can copy since they're not in your packet. I added it to the agenda. This is just our standard objection that we do to expedite type 2 filings for purposes of the record with the Stark County Commissioners. I've prepared that with regard to the recently filed Tassos intersection. And this was an expedited? Yes. One property owner? That is correct. You know, I just want to go on record. This is an annexation that did not have to happen. Do we need send resolution number. Yeah, I think Anthony's got copies of the the original we'll call it with my signature. Also move on the law director number one. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Leo? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And Mr. G Basis. Yes. the water 
instructor that takes us to communications. I'll just, I'll just read this one. Save putting the administrator hat back, back on. Uh, let's see, from Community Christmas, dear friends of the Community Christmas, thank you once again for your support and caring for those less fortunate in our community. So many families and individuals in Stark County had a merry and blessed Christmas due to your enthusiasm and help. The 23 Giving Trees service 2,118 recipients this year. Your participation is an indispensable part of our organization. May you have a happy and blessed new year. One made even better for others because of your help. Uh, sincerely, Louis Peugeot, Giving Tree Coordinator, Community Christmas. That brings us to our portion of the meeting. Uh, public speaks. If anybody wishes to address the board, we just ask if you give your name and address for the record. Is there anybody? And the back wants to talk about the senior survey possibly. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I, may, I just want to you know from dedication to public speaks on behalf of my family. I want to thank the board. All the township employees, schools, Plano schools, citizens of Plain Township, the media. For the cards, flowers, or set. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Donnie. I don't think there is a more appropriate individual that served Plain Township that was deserving of everything that was shown to him in his honor and your family. You're a living testament to your father. You hold the same position that your father held. I know your father was very proud when you assumed that position. Um, you're conducting yourself in the same manner and the um, same professionalism that your father did. Um, and uh, as a board, we were very proud to read the things that we read and saw the demonstration of uh, appreciation from the community as a whole to your family because uh, um, he meant a lot to everybody. And, you know, I'm going to miss that smile and I'm going to have those memories and every time I think of your dad, I, I smile and uh, he was a good man and Thank you. was well deserving. Likewise, echo the same, same sentiments. I didn't even have the privilege of knowing him near as long, but there was def definitely a fight, feisty, uh, passionate side to him about the community. So we certainly appreciate all, all the kind words and things we've done. Thank you. Anyone else with respect to public speaks? That will conclude. It's going to take us to concerns of trustees. And both Mr. G. Basis and myself have the same item. Well, I'm, going to, I'm, so. I'm going to defer to the chair to start. <laughs> Since we um, have the same thing. It's the Joint Economic Development Agreement with the City of North Canton. You know, over the last couple of weeks, it's been noted that now North Canton is deciding they need to reevaluate essentially what we've discussed, began discussions on since May of 2013, to which all of us had uh, vested time and re resources significantly, to which everybody had representation to go back to their own respective boards to hash through the details which ultimately got ironed out in the public hearing. I personally am at a, at a point given this started back in May. In order to get business done there, defined timetables, things cannot linger on. And I know there's been different different discussions on the side, but by our by our next meeting, if we do not have a clear and explicit yes or no answer from the city of North Canton, I would like to see us proceed forward with parring this to a three-way agreement. We have development going on in the township that is contingent upon certain services being able to be provided. That infrastructure is currently being built right now, maybe at a little slower pace because of cold, 
But, you know, from the details that have been discussed from point one, or day one, individually and, and collectively, th this delay is no, lo no longer acceptable. So, I want the record to reflect that by next meeting, if we do not have an answer, which I believe they've got a meeting next month, next Monday, mm -hmm. we need to be ready to have a revised draft of an agreement to go back to Jackson and Canton. Obviously, there's going to be some semantics there on how certain things are going to be split, but I'm, d I'm done with the analysis paralysis here. We've spent plenty of time around tables. I'm not going to continue to spend taxpayer dollars in drafting agreements first to go back and forth. The reality is I'd love to see it be a four-way agreement. Don't, don't get me wrong, but we've got to get business done for the sake of our own community, for the sake of the business owners that are investing in this community, and uh, create a great, greater sense of urgency. And I, I mean, the times, the times, times already foregone there. So, well, here's here's the here's the thing. Lump it up in a, in a shell. Not to rehash history because we're dealing with a different council and a different administration today than we would have been over the years. But my past experience over the years with these economic development agreements or these cooperative agreements with the city of North Canton have always got to the finish line and it seems to always be the same thing that happens um, at the end. The city of North Canton wouldn't be in the position they are today in regards to being able to go west of those railroad tracks if they would not have told us no pre previously three different times before we ultimately went to the city of Canton and agreed to the agreement to allow them to annex the railroad tracks. I was involved in discussions with Jackson Township and city of North Canton um, before Canton was involved. And they had the first opportunity to enter into this agreement three ways with Jackson Plain and uh, themselves. Again, they said no. Jackson then picked up the ball and then went into a two-way agreement with the city of Canton, what we all ultimately know about, went all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court and cost several hundreds of thousand dollars that was ultimately lost by the city of North Canton. I'm hoping that's not the case this time. I did have a conversation with Council President John Schneider. He respectfully asked me, because tonight I wanted to ask for an amendment drawn up, just like Scott did, um, to move forward ahead with a three-way agreement with Jackson and the city of Canton, if necessary, but he gave me his word that this would be voted up or down on the meeting of uh, February 3rd. And I told him that I would give him until February 3rd to allow council to work out their differences with the administration to see if they can come up with a an agreement or come up with the votes to override a veto or a balcony, I mean, that's what David Hell needs to do. But the public needs to understand. We don't need North Canton part of this agreement. Bringing North Canton into this agreement is the right thing to do. North Canton, um, bringing North Canton is as collectively as a group is the best thing for our only plain township but this part of Stark County. When a business is looking to locate into an area, they're looking for an area that they can locate into, and they won't, don't want to get involved in the petty differences and the arguments and the fights and the annexations and the legal battles about ultimately where they're able to be located. They want to look for an area where the subdivisions are collectively or cooperatively working together, um, that we're able to do things and put packages together as far as incentives to bring them here to create jobs. Nobody's going to get rich, and I think that's what the city of North Kansas is looking at. The city's looking at the financial, if there's a financial windfall to this agreement. There's not going to be a financial windfall to this agreement through the income tax. What is going to be created is the development of jobs and attracting businesses to the area that we can all jointly benefit from. If people go to work, we're all jointly benefiting from the, uh, that development. It's going to be best for everybody. Um, but if the city of North Canton, again, like Scott said, um, the delay is not acceptable at this point. And it's not acceptable at this point. And Eric, can you, just as a point of clarity, being amongst the legal, because actually, 
you had this come up in a discussion with a council member over there that some of them actually have a fear that what Summer Towning says just totally blocks their ability to do any type of the annexation. And my understanding from the discussions we've sat through is with respect to the tract of property we're discussing that this whole agreement is framed around, that's true. However, if they were to take a look at any other areas, say north or east, should they try to come across market for some reason, this in no way, shape, or form or context prohibits or impairs their annexation ability outside of that agreement. You're correct, and it's, it's interesting to me to even hear that argument raised as the person who went to both sides. I was with you with Ken, I was with you with North Ken, and we're trying to figure all of this out, and we're negotiating with everyone. And one of the things that I tried to get for blame, which we kind of thought wouldn't fly, was a township-wide ban on annexation. And it was North Canton that was staunchly against that and said, no, we'll, we'll give the ban, but it'll be limited to the tracts that are addressed in the agreement. So to even hear them bring that up as, as someone who was on the front line of the negotiations, it's... And the city of Canton was willing to agree to the township wide That's correct. I mean, everybody needs to understand, Plain Township financially and otherwise comes out ahead without the city of North Canton in this agreement. We're not trying to force North Canton into this agreement because it's going to be financially beneficial or otherwise by having them. The reason why they should be in this agreement is that it's the best thing for the entire area. And that's something that I have not been able to get across with my conversations and discussions with the mayor. Um, they seem to be thinking about that old approach of all or nothing that's gotten into the existing circumstances they're in with the railroad tracks. And I told them once this train leaves the station, the caboose is not backing up to pick them up. And I totally agree. And further, the second piece that we're hearing is the duration of the agreement. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the 50 years was something that the municipalities requested based upon the premise that they wanted time to recover the cost of any capital outlays for infrastructure outlays and improvements that they would have to make. Right, and I can tell you specifically, it was because if you look at Ohio Revised Code when it talks about JEDs, there's a two-year moratorium on annexations, but that applies if the JED keeps going, if a um, neighboring but not involved municipality wanted to annex in that area, they still could. It would then, the, the annexation moratorium would only apply to the the entity that's involved in the jet. So they wanted it to stretch out so that they would have more time without the threat of that to recoup the monies that they may put in a water line or they may put in you know, infrastructure to, to any of the businesses that may become a part of it. So I don't think the timeline was nearly as important to us, whether it's a 10, 15, 25, 100 year, 99 year, whatever, was never a sticking point for us. That was a, a timeline that they came up with. And my question, Eric, was, was the North Cam Law Director involved in these negotiations with you with the City of Kansas Law Director in Jackson? Yes, sir. So he was involved in the drafting of all the language that now is under scrutiny by the City of North Cam. He, 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 it was his recommendation to adopt. I don't know what his recommendation was, to be fair. I just know that he was absolutely at the table. He did all of the meetings that North Cam needed to yeah. Eric and I. I. I don't think he sits there and says, this is what I think or what, you know, I don't think. I think that's the legislature and the administration, the mayor, but... But he was certainly at, I, I want to say, all the, the same meetings I was at. This went off as far as when the four of us got together. Was Mayor held in any of those meetings no. in the city of working with you? No. But they had effective representation that should have communicated it back to the rest yeah. of the Yeah, that's true. They had council there. They had a couple of council members of each. Do you have anything else on this? I just, I, I agree 100%. February 11th, if we don't have an answer, that we have an agreement that we can sign and send to Jackson and North Canton. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else concerns the trustees? Concerns of the fiscal officer? Mr. Flex? No. Okay, that takes us to the approval of the minutes for January 14th, 2014. Also move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. 
Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And there is a need for executive session, so be hereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to adjourn to executive session. It's 6.51 p.m. from this regular meeting is authorized under Ohio Revised Code 121.22G for the purpose of consideration of 1B, employment of a public employer official, 1F, compensation of a public employer official. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Mr. Hobbs? Yes. 